So today we're talking about adding in hammer-ons and pull-offs to our improvised guitar solos. Uh, it's a really good way to start adding speed into your playing without having to practice a lot of alternate picking work. Uh, because hammer-ons and pull-offs can act as a note in itself and you don't actually have to pick that note. So it helps you play some fast passages without having to do all the hard work. Uh, it's really important though to have little systems of hammer-on and pull-off tricks that you kind of know ahead of time though, so you can use them easier in the middle of a guitar solo. And that's what I'm going to show you today uh, using the A pentatonic scale in its second form. So if I go to A pentatonic in its first form, it looks like this on the fifth fret. And that's the one we've been using in all these videos. But the second form of it is up here starting on the tenth fret on the first string. And uh, I'll have the shape there so you can play along with that as well. Now, keep in mind, this is not a different scale. This is still a pentatonic minor. It's just a different shape. A shape is not a scale. A shape is just a way to play a scale. So I could play that scale on the piano or on the tuba. Um, on a guitar, we just call it a shape because it looks a certain way. It has a certain little uh, boxiness to it. All right. Uh, what we're going to do is practice using this shape over the jam track that's in the description. It's a funk jam track. And uh, mainly, you'll be able to use the pentatonic scale over this and the Dorian scale as well. Uh, but if we look at our second shape here, I want to talk about a few specific moves here. In our second shape, we have these four notes. 10, 8, and 10, and 8. And right there is where I want to start focusing on my first hammer-on move. What I'm going to do here on the second string is I'm going to play my 8th fret and then hammer on the 10th fret like this. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to let my pick drop down to the first string and play the note there with my first finger, that 8th fret. So I've got 8, 10, and 8, just like that. And this is what I'm going to practice as my first hammer-on move, is doing a hammer-on and then progressing to the next note on the next string. I also want to do the same move here on the third string by doing the hammer-on with the notes available to me, these two. And then the next note I'm allowed to play in the scale is here, so I'll be practicing that hammer-on move as well. And I'm kind of treating it like two eighth notes and a quarter note. One and two, three and four, one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four. I can also practice that move down here, starting on the fourth string with these notes. And I can also do it here. And I could do it down here on the sixth string, of course. But we don't solo a lot on the sixth string, so it's good for exercise. How practical is it in soloing? Probably not that practical. You should still give it a try. So now that I've practiced this on all my strings, I'm going to try applying it in my jam solo by really just focusing on the beat. When the beat comes up, I'm going to try and do one of those moves. Then I might wander my way through the scale and then do that move again. And then I might try and wander through the scale and just repeat myself with just that hammer-on move. So let's hear what that sounds like, applying those hammer-ons uh, to this jam. You know, some interesting moves right there, but it's really not helping me go much faster because, you know, those were slow hammer-ons. I could have picked all those notes instead of doing... I could have just picked all three of them. Where this really comes in helpful is when you start doubling the speed into 16th note territory. If I wanted to go 1 EN, 2 EN, 3 EN, that's going to take a lot of, uh, you know, that's going to be a difficult passage here for my pick. I'm not even that good at it. But if I do it with a hammer-on, it's very simple. I only have one pick stroke here and one pick stroke here. Now that's a move I can pepper into my guitar solos almost anywhere and it's going to sound good. Same thing here. So now I'm just going to basically double the speed of what I was practicing and, and inject that into my lead and still do what I was doing before, going up and down the shape, but then throwing in those hammer-ons where I need. Now, I'm, I'm kind of overdoing the move right now, and I, I want you to do that as you're practicing. I want you to kind of saturate your guitar solos with whatever new technique that you're practicing. And that way you kind of see how it fits in in all the different areas uh, of a track. Or, you know, you're kind of getting all the, the juice out of it if you, if you overdo it. And you kind of hear it, what it sounds like in many different contexts. So, now that you've got that, um, I think a nice little trick to start adding on is to do a hammer-on and a pull-off like this. So I'm going to play the 8th fret, I'm going to hammer on 10, and then I'm just going to pull it right back off like that with one pick stroke. 
Okay, I call these diddlies, or biddlies, or biddly diddlies. With this move, here's what I like to do, is I like to do the hammer on the pull-off, and then go down to the next note in the scale. In this case, that would be my note on the second string. So I'm doing 8, 10, 8, and then if I come down one note in the scale, I'm right here. And that's what I'm going to be practicing, is doing one pick stroke here, and one pick stroke there. Like that. If I take that same move and translate it, starting on the second string, I can do a hammer on here, and a pull off there, and then go down a note here to the third string. And that's the next move I'm going to practice. And then, again, just keep going down the scale. Here's the third string. The fourth string. All right. Now, uh, there's a few different rhythmic ways you can phrase this. You could play it as a straight triplet, one triplet, two, where there's no uh, there's no gaps between the notes. It's it's just steady all the way through. Da 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 dum like this. That would be like a, a triplet right into a quarter note. One triplet two, three triplet four, one triplet two. But you could also play it as two sixteenth notes and an eighth note, and that would be da da dum dum, da da dum dum, and do 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 do, do 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 do. And that's basically. Uh, uh, you have a little bit, that last note is a little longer than the other ones. That would sound like this. So those are 16th notes with an 8th note. Here's a steady triplet. You hear the difference? Back to the 16th. Now, for right now, uh, you can kind of be sloppy in between there, but I would recommend trying to learn how to do it the steady way first, because uh, I think that's the harder method is doing da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum without any little gaps there. It's easy to start stuttering it like da 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 blup, da da blup, you know, uh, and I don't really think that's a good way to be practicing this. So I would uh, recommend starting it off with just completely steady notes. So if I take that concept and apply it to the same jam track. Um, I'll try and do it on all the different strings here, and of course, in between, I'll be moving up and down that second pentatonic shape as well. Let's hear what that sounds like. in there, but I think you get the idea. It's one of those moves that's very translatable in almost any circumstance. And remember, we're only doing this in the second shape. All these concepts we're talking about, I would really recommend you apply them to the first shape, the, all the pentatonic shapes. Um, but it is important to work within a shape to understand what's available to you within that shape. Because there's certain pull-off tricks and certain hammer-on tricks that you just can't do in other shapes. Uh, and that's one of the things that's unique to the guitar, is by moving into different shapes, you kind of have access to different sounding tricks that, uh, you know, with bends and slides that you just don't have elsewhere. So, uh, the last thing I want to talk about here is adding in um, hammer-ons and pull-offs using the Dorian shape. And the Dorian shape that I have uh, used here for this uh, jam looks like this. Pretty simple shape here. I'm starting uh, on the 10th fret of, on the first string. 10, 8, 7, 10, 8, 7, 9, 7. 10, 9, 7, 10, 9, 7. The scale keeps going, but I'm just going to stop right there because this is such a convenient shape. And if I look at these three notes on the top, that's a, a ripe little uh, situation here for doing some hammer-ons and pull-offs. For example, I could hammer on all, two, all three notes like that. I'm uh, starting here on 7, hammer on the 8, and then hammer on the 10 as well. So that's a good thing to be practicing. Also on the 2nd string. I could do that on the 4th string. There's three notes on the 4th string. And on the 6th string. And, the string. and then backwards, of course, doing pull-offs through those. I line up all my fingers on that string, and I pull off one at a time. And those are the moves I'm going to try and add into my solo this time. Um, but once again, I'm going to try and follow it up with a note on the other string. So watch, like if I do pull-offs here, notice how I picked the note below it on the next string. Same thing here, I'm going to do pull-offs, but then I'm going to pick the next note on the next string. Uh, I'm not going to do that move here on the third string because my shape only has two notes on it. I want to do a three note kind of pull off thing. So I could do it here. All right. In the opposite, what if I did hammer ons and then pick the next note of the scale? So I'm going up this time. I'll start at the bottom and I'll hammer on. And then I'll just drop my pick to hit that next note in the scale. So hammer, pick. Let's start here and do it again. Hammer, pick. I'm going to skip that string, start on the second string. Hammer, pick. So you'll be hearing a lot of these moves for this jam. And backwards.
chords like this. And then, of course, with hammer-ons and pull-offs, uh, you can do a lot of things without picking at all. So once you kind of get something going like this, you can kind of do that perpetual motion thing where you're constantly playing those three notes without actually having to pick them. So obviously that's the one thing you want to be practicing in isolation and really, really good exercise for your fingers is playing without picking. Uh, and when you have three notes like that, it's a, almost an ideal situation to be practicing uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs without picking like this. So if I start applying that, um, that will be the last thing. Uh, let's take a listen to what that sounds like. different ideas there. Uh, it's a very fast jam and uh, you know you're, it's a good one to kind of develop some speed to. But for me I always believe that legato and tam runs and pull-offs are the quickest way to start sounding like a faster player because you don't have to coordinate all of your pick strokes. Every time you have a hammer on that's like a free pick stroke. That's something you didn't have to pick. And uh, you know developing that skill I think is the first way to really start sounding fast and intricate when you're playing these leads. Now it's not an excuse to not learn picking. You should definitely be able to pick everything that you're doing with legato uh, within reason. Um, so try and balance out your legato work with your pick work as well. So hopefully this is giving you a few simple moves that you can practice in isolation that when you apply it makes a big difference. Um, I really like techniques and moves that, that only take a minute to learn but uh, really can apply themselves anywhere. It really gives you the most bang for your buck when you're practicing, when you're learning new techniques. Something that can be used in a lot of different spots as opposed to just being used in one specific style or in one specific scale. Uh, those are the kind of techniques and exercises that I really recommend people practice. So I hope this helps you. And thanks for watching.